Hello, this is Syke, and welcome back to my channel. Um, what makes it difficult to detect, let's say, differences among students? And today I'm going to continue my reliability series and talk about three different sources of error in classical test theory. So we really have, let's say, four different sources of error, primary sources of error. One, test forms. Two, time. Three, the items or questions on my test. And four, judges or raters. I'm going to examine judges or raters in a different video series. So for now, I'm going to focus on the first three sources. There are various situations for which we might want alternate versions or alternative versions of the same test. The most common situation might be if we were concerned about cheating. In this case, we could create alternative versions of the test to ensure that people are not, let's say, sharing information. Alternate forms reliability would examine the extent to which people who are doing well on one test relative to others are also doing well on a different test designed to measure the same thing. To measure this, we can simply correlate the performance of individuals across each test form. We typically want this correlation to be 0.8 or greater and probably, you know, values greater than 0.9 or so would be ideal. Time can also be a source of inconsistency. We are primarily concerned with this source of error when I take scores at one point in time and then use them to make decisions at a different point in time. So for example, I may have students take some kind of placement test at one point in time, and then they would actually start taking classes at a different point in time. In this case, we would want our scores to be consistent between each point in time. So I could use a test retest correlation. Like alternate forms, we want this correlation to also be pretty high. Let's say with 0.9 or so um, being close to ideal. Lastly, each question on a test can be a source of error. In this case, each item or test question can be viewed as basically kind of like a mini test or a mini observation. If each item measures the same thing, then students who do well on one item should also have a tendency to do well on other items. So to examine this, we would typically look at some version of what we typically call, let's say a coefficient alpha or an alpha coefficient. Alpha reflects the extent to which the test items are correlated and the number of items on my test. So we would want alpha to be around 0.8 or higher, although some people have suggested that 0.7 or so may be okay for, um, let's say, various research purposes. So that's all that I have for you today. And in my next video, I'm actually going to talk about how we can obtain these values using SPSS.